and at this height you can pick up everything across the floodplains. So you see the dingoes down there, the emus and the kangaroos and the birds lifting as you go across the lakes. It's sensational. This in a way is the armchair of the nation. After starting as a cadet at the ABC, Paul Lockyer worked around the globe and across Australia and was still passionate about his craft after more than 40 years. His overseas postings covered most of the world, from the United States to Asia. The Khmer Rouge claims that it has changed its ways of being... And the Conservatives be... see Texas as virtually a frontline state against the communist menace in Vietnam Central America. Vietnam hopes that 1984 can finally produce signs of economic recovery. But it's much more... Former TV colleague and friend Ray Martin has known Paul Lockyer for more than 30 years. I used to say to me, you know, he had Peter Pan pill, he just got younger. While we got older, lockers kept getting younger. And you'd look at it, he looked like he was 45 when he was 61. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want some help with that? Yeah, no, well, it is, uh, <laughs> that youthful exuberance fun. came through as Paul told the stories of the vast country west of the Dividing Range. Now, I used to tell him he had the best job in the world. He, I love those bush stories and he'd ring me up from wherever he was saying, guess where I am and, and you'd love to be here, that sort of stuff. But he wasn't just a bush reporter, of course. He, was, he covered the Olympic Games and uh, he got a Logie for ABC coverage of the Olympic Games. He used to do you know, a flower show for midday where he'd go out and talk to a couple of old ladies uh, uh, on, on something for midday. Ray Martin says Paul Lockyer's character was the strength behind his journalism. One of the great tests of, of journalism, I think, is, you know, can you go back the next day and talk to somebody, especially if you've done something that might be critical. And he could be as tough as the next bloke in terms of doing stories. He just did it with a, with a velvet glove. Um, but, uh, but he could always go back the next day. And that's the great test, that if you've got your facts right and you've told the story accurately, even if someone doesn't like the story, they still talk to you. And they always talk to lockers. It's from this base, more than 20 kilometres inside Camp Achia, that much of the military strategy and political policy making of the ousted Khmer Rouge regime is now decided. The Khmer Rouge leadership claims that it has counted two Vietnamese offensives since the beginning of the dry season last October. Thai military intelligence sources expect more than 300,000 Camp Achians to flood across the border when the Vietnamese begin their offensive in earnest. Since the International Pledging Conference last November, some 45,000 tonnes of food, mainly rice, has been delivered to Camp Achia. While the Space Shuttle crew salvaged success from potential failure, the OSAT episode is another blot on the Space Shuttle program. From a distance, it all looks green enough. But when you get down into the paddocks, you can see how sparse and how stunted the crops are. Performances of these Olympics are already matching the optimistic targets set by the Australian Olympic Committee. 41 medals gained in Atlanta in 1996, the former benchmark has been passed. And Australia has already gained 16 gold medals at these Olympics, matching that of Sydney. What happened here yesterday? <laughs> Armageddon. In the immediate aftermath of the disaster, the survivors of Grantham were asking the question, why hadn't they received more warning? After all, they argued, the floodwaters had already covered some distance, carving out a path of destruction through a number of small communities in the Lockyer Valley before finally reaching here. Uh, joining us now are Paul's widow Maria and his two sons Nick and Jamie and please welcome also our special guest Deputy Premier and National Party Leader Andrew Stoner to present the award for most outstanding regional reporting. Well it's an incredible honour uh, to join you tonight to present the inaugural Paul Lockyer Award for Outstanding Regional Reporting and to stand here uh, with uh, Maria, Nick and Jamie Lockyer in doing so. Paul had an incredible knack for bringing out the best in country people who might otherwise be a little reluctant uh, to talk to journalists, unlike some country politicians. He was incredibly passionate about regional issues and in return the regions loved him. Tonight we remember Paul and we acknowledge three outstanding media outlets following in his footsteps. And the nominees are The Daily Advertiser, 
Woga. Catherine Clifford and Elise Denman, ABC Tamworth. Giselle Wakatama, ABC Newcastle. And I'll now ask Nick Lockyer to announce the winner. Thank you. And the winner is the Daily Advertiser Wagga. Natural disasters can be especially challenging to cover where the impact is felt so close to home. This was the case in Wagga Wagga when Daily Advertiser staff joined 10,000 evacuees as a giant flood threatened to sweep through the state's largest inland city. But the Daily Advertiser team continued to produce first-class papers and keep the community updated. I'd just like to say what an absolute honour it is to win this award, especially the inaugural award. For tonight, I'd like to thank the sponsors and the organisers and for everybody who's turned up and uh, my staff, of course, fantastic effort. Yeah, for those who don't know, we put the paper out for three days from the local Australian football club. Uh, we were evacuated. It was Wagga's largest peacetime evacuation. Uh, we were in the centre of Wagga. Uh, we had to move as well and we put the paper out for three days. Our subs moved to Albury and we went with laptops, cameras and to the rules club and we still managed to put the paper out. So I think Paul Lockyer would be proud that we, we managed to do all that. Thank you very much. Now to present the Kennedy Award for Outstanding Crime Reporting, New South Wales Police Commissioner Andrew Scipioni. Well, good evening and uh, thank you so much for the honour and for the privilege of being here and being a part of what is a very special night for all of us, I'm sure. I'd like to start to, uh, tonight by congratulating the committee that have actually brought this idea to life. Um, Adam Walters and Rebecca Richardson have been the driving force. Please join with me in acknowledging their contribution. I'd, I'd also tonight like to acknowledge the family of Les Kennedy. The family are down here. Unfortunately, Merle's not with us, but the rest are here. Please join with me in acknowledging them. As I look around this room, many of the people that were there with us a year ago um, are here, joined with us tonight. I told Les's mother, Merle, on that very sad night a year ago that we would name a police dog after Les, and we kept our promise. I've got to be honest here, no, 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 just, just bear with me. I've got to be honest here, police dog Les had a little bit too much larrikin in him. And so now he is enjoying a wonderful civilian life. But hang on, hang on, hang on. So, what we have actually done is sourced a new police dog who is to be named, not Les, because he got a bit too loud, Kennedy. This is police dog Kennedy. <laughs> so whilst Merle's not here, and I'm sure the, the Kennedy clan will take this and whilst Mer, Merle's not here in the physical, she's surely here with us in the spiritual, and the legend will live on in police dog Kennedy. Les was a great friend to many police. He was passionate about justice. He was passionate about journalism. You all know that. And tonight is a celebration of excellence in journalism. Policing and journalism cross paths each and every day. You know, police expect scrutiny. We are accountable and uh, we're also human. Les Kennedy understood that, which is why Les excelled at his craft. We were very fortunate to have had him. Um, we, one year ago on this very night, at this very time, had a chance to say goodbye. Um, but I don't think we truly said goodbye. I think we said, um, thanks for the memories, Les. And tonight it's my privilege to be here and to announce for you the nominees. The nominees are uh, Matt Doran, Network 10. Yoni Bashan, The Sunday Telegraph. <laughs> Le 
Lisa Davies, Ilya Gridniff and Dan Proudman from Fairfax. And the winner is Yoni Bashan, the Sunday Telegraph. Yoni Bashan's important expose had national and international implications. With gun crimes occurring at a frightening rate, it illustrated how so many of these weapons were coming into our country and also exposed a major flaw in the monitoring by federal authorities of such deadly and illegal imports. Um, this is a fantastic and tremendous honour, um, even more so because I, this, this is a crime category and I very much feel that this was Les's category and if he was here tonight he probably would have cleaned it up. Um, I'd just like to thank the organisers and this is a fantastic event and I hope it's still going in a hundred years from now. So thank you again and um, yeah, thank you.